Hey everybody, it's me, and welcome to a spooky episode of Was It Good? And sure, I know it's not technically Halloween, but we are living in pretty terrifying times, am I right guys? Death surrounds us. <laughs> Let's talk about a scary movie from my childhood. One of my favorite movies of all time from when I was a kid. Something that scared the living shit out of me then and still is pretty creepy now. Monster House. And I'm sure a lot of people my age have watched this movie. And if you don't remember it, it probably just lay dormant in the back of your mind until a handsome, sensual YouTuber came up and said, Hey, remember this? I'm not talking about me. There's like 50 other YouTubers who've already talked about this. But I decided to go ahead and review this anyway because this movie holds a special place in my heart. And after rewatching this movie many, many years later, I start to realize how much of a masterpiece this movie truly is. It had so much more depth to it that you didn't realize was there when you were a kid. The interesting animation, the lovable characters, <laughs> the amount of bodies this house has piled up on its name, and the very, very sad story that actually has to do with the house and how it came to be. Now, I just wanna talk about the animation for a second because the only way I can describe this is a successful attempt at what Hoodwinked was trying to do. Because Hoodwinked was trying to do the whole clay animation but it's actually animated type feel. But Monster House did it and they took it and ran with it. The dialogue still to this day is really funny and really entertaining. I mean, obviously there's a few cringy, cheesy things in here and there, but hey, it's a kid's movie. This movie is what I consider to be a really big underrated gem. So grab some popcorn and let's go over this thing together. This movie starts out with a stupid little girl who just won't stop singing on her bike. Then somehow she ends up getting stuck in the yard of the menacing Nebercracker, who is the scariest old man I've ever seen. Like honestly, they designed this old man so creepy. He's genuinely genuinely scary. And not only in looks, but he was voiced by Steve Buscemi. I mean, come on. So he ends up yelling at the little girl to get off his lawn and steal the stupid girl's bike and boy, those muscles. He ripped that shit off without even blinking. Stop it. Stop. Don't, don't look at me. Don't look, oh. Thank God, he was just looking at the kid. Then we get introduced to the main character, DJ, who is doing what all teenagers normally do, spying on their neighbors through a telescope. Am I right, guys? Just me. When I was your age, I did exactly the same thing. Of course, it was with binoculars and involved the lovely Jensen twins. Okay, this is starting to get a little bit concerning. Was this just a regular hobby to have back then when we didn't have internet and cell phones? Not sure the setting of time this movie has, but I mean, there are other things to do. You know, sports, Scrabble. Neither of which was as lovely as your beautiful mother. Oh. Would you be an angel and help me bring out the incisor? Oh, Hold on to this, buddy. Yeah, I don't want to forget that. Hey, whoa! Saw that, you little bitch. Ah! Oh, okay. Then we get to meet Chowder, who's the token fat kid, who basically the whole movie you go, ha ha, you're fat. Chowder starts getting all hyped about trick-or-treating this year, but DJ, he's a big boy. He doesn't like trick-or-treating anymore. It's time for an in-your-face disgrace! <laughs> it's funny because he's fat. So somehow the ball ends up flying all the way into Never Cracker's yard. So DJ tries to get it, but uh oh, Nebby Webby's coming to get him. So then he dies. Seriously, he 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 falls on top of DJ and dies from a heart attack. <laughs> This movie was made for children, so the old man gets carried away. DJ ends up finding a key to the house that Nebercracker dropped, but the house seems very sad that they're taking him away. And once you watch this movie for the second time, you'll see why this is actually a pretty sad part. Because this is the type of movie that the second and third time you watch it, you see all these little minute details that you missed in the beginning. Then we get to see through the windows of the house. And we all know what they say about the windows of the house. The windows are the house to the soul. Or no, um, the, the, the house is the eyes to the windows. No. Uh, to the window, to the wall, till sweat drop down. But honestly, I just want to mention this is a really cool way of symbolizing that the house wants to chop off DJ's head. Then we get to meet the edgy teen babysitter, Elizabeth, or as she likes to call herself. It's Z. Z? What is this, Sesame Street? Wait until you meet her friends F and Y. Oh, but don't fuck with C. C's crazy, you don't want to mess with C, DJ. DJ! W wake up! DJ! Please! God, DJ, wake up! <laughs> oh, oh my god. It's just a dream, okay. Hello. Hello. Dang, whoever is on that phone sounds hungy wungy. Very funny. See how you like it. 
<laughs> oh, great. He called the number back and it's coming from the house. This is Bones. What's up? He's in a band. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bones, <laughs> knock it off. Downstairs, now. Oh, hey, look, a 30-year-old crackhead bullying a child. Man, I really wish he'd get eaten alive. <laughs> Where are your parents? My dad's at the pharmacy and my mom's at the movies with her personal trainer. Excuse me? I'm sorry, what, what, what was that? My dad's at the pharmacy and my mom's at the movies with her personal trainer. I, I just feel like I just got hit by a train. Then Bones ends up going on a drunk rampage and yells at the house for stealing his kite when he was a kid. Man, he should really stop messing with that house. He might get eaten alive, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so DJ meets up with Chowder and tells him that he thinks Nebercracker is back from the dead. Hold on. <laughs> he's slow because he's fat. Shatter then attempts to prove to DJ that the house isn't haunted by going up to the door and ringing the doorbell. Get off my lawn! Don't go on! <laughs> Jesus, Chowder, the man just died yesterday. In front of you! On top of your friend! Don't you think it's a bit soon to, to make fun of him dying? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know about you guys, but this house kind of seems like a monster if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Moving on. So the fellas stay up all night spying on the house, but end up accidentally spying on a cute little girl, which gives both the boys their first boner. <sighs> But oh no, she's walking up to the house to sell chocolates. Are you guys mentally challenged? If you are, I'm certified to teach you baseball. Oh, holy shit, Jenny. You didn't have to step on him that hard. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know it's like the correct way to say it, but just hearing someone call someone mentally disabled in a kid's movie, just, that's hilarious. Guys! Run, Chowder, run it! Hey, uh, honey, do you hear something that kind of sounds like, um... Children getting eaten by a house? No, honey, I think that's your dementia talking. <laughs> oh, dear. You stupid fucking bitch. Oh, yeah, just a bunch of kids screaming in a quiet suburb, but not a single person is phased by it. So DJ and Chowder end up going through a bunch of funny, awkward dialogue where they try to hit on the girl. And honestly, yeah, a lot of it's pretty funny and good. Well, Dad, why don't you kiss my hairy butt? Hey, DJ, got any beer? Well, hello there. <laughs> I heard something's wrong with the dog. What's going on? It's Peter Jones. You listen to me, man. You do anything to that beautiful dog. I'm gonna kill you right now. Peter, what, what do you mean? It's a, it's a movie. I can't control what happens in the movie. Tell him to stop. Tell him to stop. I, I, don't, I don't like it. Tell him to stop. No, seriously, Peter. I, I can't control oh. what happens. <laughs> ah! 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 Uh, this movie is PG, and did I just witness a dog getting massacred? So Jenny ends up calling the police, who is voiced by Kevin James and Nick Cannon, and honestly, I find these two some of the best characters in the movie. All right, kids, this better be good. I was in the forest wrestling with a bear claw when we got the call. <laughs> <clears throat> That's loaded! So they attempt so they attempt to provoke the house so the cops could see for themselves but the house is too smart for them and the cops end up calling them crazy and making them go home they so they attempt to get help from somewhere else from a legendary gamer oh fuck you faggot the fuck you say to me you little shit <laughs> How are you? How are you not in fucking school? But they call him Skull. Who's they? Me and DJ. You, it's yeah. you kiss your mother with that He's the smartest mouth. guy on earth. <laughs> Jenny, hold, on. Whoa. hold up. Skull is in the game zone right now, and you don't want to mess with him when he's in the game zone. Yes, dear. I wanted to know if you're coming down for dinner. Ugh. Fuck you, mom. I'm in the game zone right now. Honey, you're 35, and you live with me, and you don't pay rent. Come downstairs and eat dinner. Mom, don't you get it? I'm in the game zone. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, dear, I don't think you understand. You're not in your game zone. You're in my game zone, bitch.
All right. Now pull down those pants so I can see the cheeks. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Mom, you know, stop. He ends up telling him about a phenomenon where people's souls get bound to a house and that they need to attack the heart. You've got to strike at the source of life. The heart. But houses don't have hearts. So all of them end up coming up with a plan to get into the house and kill it before Halloween happens because they're worried that the kids will get eaten. And their idea is putting it to sleep with cold medicine. First, we build a dummy. We fill the dummy with a few gallons of cold medicine. Look, I mean, I ain't no doctor. I ain't no contractor, but I'm pretty sure a house ain't gonna fall asleep to cold medicine. So Chowder straight up yoinks a bunch of cold medicine from his dad's store. So is there just like no one on duty? Is no one working there? No camera? He just slid in there like a ghost in the night. No one saw him. So they make a dummy, fill it with the cold medicine, and brought it to the house, and the plan commences. Holy shit, what a shot. But uh-oh, the cops caught him messing with the house again. They're in trubby wubby. I will shoot you. Well, I'm sorry, what? What? You just threatened to kill a child? I will shoot you. Uh, nothing like threatening a child with death that makes me like these cops even more. Oh, nothing like a little bit of drug abuse for me to like these cops even more. Freeze! Tree? But I'm really starting to like these cops. Really hope nothing happens. To ah! Oh, God! No! Well, they're dead. So somehow the medicine just magically works on the house. We're just going to skip that whole plot hole. So all of them end up stuck in the house and they try to find the heart. So they end up seeing pics of his wife and the story goes that Nebercracker fattened up his wife and then killed her and then ate her for her meat, which is a pretty fucked up story. So Chowder ends up making the house throw up by shooting its uvula. Then that must be the uvula. Oh, so it's a girl house. Oh, Chowder, you stupid piece of shit. That ain't a pussy. Chowder, knock it off. Whoop, whoop, whoa, Chowder. You need to slow your roll here, bud. Shooting a young girl in her chest while she's wearing a white shirt. Do you understand what you have done, Chowder? Well, I guess in this universe, Jabba the Hutt was frozen in carbonite, not Han Solo. Is that canon? <laughs> Okay, I'm out. See you later. That's it. That's the video. All right. You get back here. <clears throat> oh, gotcha. <laughs> Chowder, you stupid fat fucking idiot. God, imagine the splinters. So they all make it out of the house by making the house throw up. <laughs> But after DJ almost gets bodied by an ambulance, lo and behold, look who walks out of it. <laughs> he was actually alive the whole time. I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time. I know about Constance. What? What do you know? You don't know anything. You didn't kill her, did you? So then we find out the really sad truth that Nebercracker didn't actually kill his wife but he loved his wife very much. So much. She was a carny known as the lady as big as a house. Ironic, I know. Everyone hated her and laughed at her, bullied her, threw things at her, but he thought she was amazing and took her away from the carny life. I can take you away from here. And then Nebercracker bought her a lot and was building a house together on that lot. But Constance still was being bullied. Kids throwing stuff at her, calling her names, and dealing with this her whole life. She was obviously angry about this, so she ends up snapping at the kids and yelling at them while swinging an axe, accidentally knocking out Nebercracker. And in this fit of rage, she falls to the basement of her house, accidentally grabbing on to the concrete lever and dumping concrete on top of her, killing her. So basically, this movie is just a better version of Up, let's be real. So this whole time, the reason Nebercracker was yelling at kids to get away was to protect the kids. Not because he was an angry old man. He's actually a really nice guy. He just didn't want his wife to end up slobbing up some kids. This man is a true simp for his wife. <laughs> Am I right, fellas? After hearing this, DJ ends up trying to help Nebercracker let go of Constance. So the house literally chases them down. 
But once again, the entire neighborhood is chilling. Dear, I swear, I swear, you're, it sounds like a, a house turned into a, a walking monster and he's breaking down power lines and a bunch of kids are screaming and running. Are you sure you're not hearing this, honey? <laughs> I How swear about you to stop God. thinking about that and start thinking about getting it up? Huh? God damn it, woman. I hope you get concrete poured over you, then you turn into the house and I'll blow you up. Oh, that's how you want to play it, huh? Fucking bitch. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, honey. I, I, it was a joke. Honey. Honey. Honey, it was a joke! So Nebby Webby tries to reason with Constance. You've been a bad girl, haven't you? Spank that. Yeah, you freaking people. spank that step. Yeah, I've been a bad girl. I've been such a bad house. Yeah, you spank me. So what proceeds to happen is a giant action scene, which honestly is really good and well animated. I could only compare it to a Dark Souls boss fight. Oh, thank God they got the house. Oh, I forgot. Phase two. I can't. Yes, you can. Go. I kissed a girl. Of course she chooses DJ. I was team chowder the whole time. Then Nebercracker dances with Constance as her soul fades away. But it's a happy ending because Nebercracker's happy that they're both finally free from that hell. So at the end, they give all the toys that the house took away to everyone trick-or-treating. And once again, no one asked about the giant monster house walking around, destroying buildings, destroying power lines. Like, literally no one mentions it. Oh yeah, and just a little uh, side note, no one actually died. Um, everyone ends up walking out of the hole unscathed, which I think is hilarious. Because when I was a kid, I did not watch the credits. I, I cut it off when the credits started, so I just assumed everyone was freaking dead. Because the movie doesn't even show anyone coming out of the hole until the credit scene happens. Which adds another layer of awesome to this movie, because a lot of people don't watch credit scenes. So if a lot of people walked out beforehand, they would just assume everyone's dead. But this is a sneaky way to get that PG in there because no one actually died. If you haven't watched this movie before, I recommend you watching this. Now, obviously, I kind of spoiled a lot for you, but this is a movie that you can watch multiple, multiple times and find new little minute details that you didn't notice before. Or maybe you're someone who already watched this, but you watched it when you were really young and you kind of want to see it now. Go watch it. It's on Netflix. It's really good. Get in Discord call. Watch it with your friends. If you like this video, please subscribe and please turn on your notifications. If you love nostalgia and old movies turn on all notifications because i'm going to be doing a lot more of these of all these old movies that i used to love that i'm sure a lot of you used to love and then see how they are now see if they were good see if they were bad so thanks everyone for watching this video this was really fun looking back on this movie please stay indoors wash your hands play some games and don't accidentally fall to your basement and get covered in concrete and turn into a giant monster house thanks guys